Now let's discuss about the next theory of failure which is maximum shear stress theory or the other name is Tresca theory. As I told you, remember this name as well. So as I explained you in detail that what these theories do, they compare a particular parameter from the actual condition to that parameter in the axial, uniaxial tension test during failure. They compare them and that's how we get a theory of failure. So in this case, maximum shear stress is compared. In actual case, with the case of shear stress, maximum shear stress in the uniaxial tension test during failure. That's what I have written here. That maximum shear stress in actual case, when it crosses the maximum allowable shear stress in simple tension test or uniaxial tension test, then failure occurs as per this theory. Now, what will be the value of maximum allowable shear stress in uniaxial tension test? Then recall the uniaxial Mohr circle and the stress element that I showed you. I told you and we already know that maximum shear stress is equal to radius of the Mohr circle. Radius of Mohr circle was equal to sigma 1 divided by 2. So maximum shear stress in the uniaxial tension test at any point, whenever whatever situation is there, will be equal to sigma 1 divided by 2. Now, at the failure point, sigma 1 is equal to SYT or sigma yt or sigma ut depending upon you are considering yielding or fracture as the failure criteria. So let's consider yield to be the failure criteria. So what will happen during failure sigma 1 is equal to sigma yt. So during failure maximum shear stress will be equal to sigma yt by 2 right that is what I have written here. From Mohr circle, from the basics of complex stress, we know that tau max is equal to sigma 1 by 2 and during failure, sigma 1 is equal to sigma yt. So, tau max is equal to sigma yt by 2 or we can write tau max is equal to 0.5 of sigma yt. Right. So, what we have done here, we have actually related, we have actually related the maximum shear stress during failure with the maximum allowable tensile stress during failure. Although there are no such set relations out there, right? Just like I told you that during failure, maximum allowable tensile stress, we assumed it to be the same as the maximum allowable uh, stress in compression, right? In tension and compression, I told you, we assumed that both of them were same. Although it's not necessary that they will be same for all the materials, but it's an assumption. It made things easier and simpler for us without sacrificing much accuracy. In a similar way, we have related the sigma yt with the allowable shear stress, just like we uh, linked it with allowable compressive stress. So, this is the relationship between them. But this relationship is given by this theory itself. When you are applying this theory, only then this relationship will be applicable. Although this relationship is a bit general relationship, and at majority of the places we use this relationship without the mention of this theory as well. I am sure you know about it. You have done that, right? By Mohr circle, we directly do that. But to be very uh, precise, this relationship between tau max and sigma yt is applicable under this theory only, under as a result of this theory itself. Okay, so this was the case of maximum shear stress in the uniaxial tension test during failure. Now, what about the maximum shear stress in the actual case? That also we need to know and then we need to equate them. Now, in any actual case, a 3D state of stress, sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3, all will exist. So, in such a volume element where sigma 1, sigma 2 and sigma 3 all are existing, there will be three different types of shear stress defined on different planes, right? We have already discussed all these details in strength of material. So, sigma 1, 2 is equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 2 divided by 2. Similarly, sigma 2, 3, sigma 2 minus sigma 3 divided by 2 and sigma 1, 3 also you can write. This has been written from the Mohr circle. If you draw Mohr circle for such a case, one will be sigma 1, other will be sigma 2, a circle will be drawn and the radius of this circle, right? That is going to give you the maximum value of shear stress. That will be nothing but their difference means diameter divided by 2, right? So, from there it has come. So now, let's have a closer look at the expression of maximum shear stress theory. 
we can clearly see from the mohr circle that radius of mohr circle is going to give you the maximum value of shear stress this is we have already covered in strength of materials right radius of mohr circle is nothing but half of the diameter and diameter is equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 2 again these are the basics of strength of material so we are not going into those details right now but since radius cannot be negative in a way so it is best to put a mod on this expression so that whatever will be the value whether the value of sigma 1 minus sigma 2 will come out to be negative or positive it will turn out to be positive as it comes out of the mod so mod will make sure that we get the magnitude of the highest value of shear stress right and you can see the best application of this mod in such a mohr circle when let's say both sigma 1 and sigma 2 are where are on the negative side are in the compression so if you put sigma 1 and sigma 2 with a negative sign so it will become minus sigma 1 plus sigma 2 right they are going to get subtracted no doubt but the value after subtraction may come out to be negative right and in such cases if you have a mod you will be having just the magnitude of shear stress maximum shear stress which is radius of this mohr circle so using a mod is recommended in maximum shear stress theory like this and in a similar way we can write the expression for further two stresses further two shear stresses as well now let us see a practical case here a case which can be directly asked to you as a question in your examination for the sake of better understanding let's consider a case of 3d state of stress having sigma 1 sigma 2 and sigma 3 as three principal stresses okay they have three different values all in mega pascal in this case if i want to know the value of tau 1 2 then that value will be equal to sigma 100 minus sigma 2 40 which will give you 60 divided by 2 that will be equal to 30 right in a similar way tau 2 3 will be sigma 2 minus sigma 3 which is 40 minus 20 divided by 2 it is 10 mega pascal and tau 1 3 is going to be sigma 1 minus sigma 3 which is going to be 80 divided by 2 40 mega pascal these are the three values of tau shear stress that we can have in a 3d state of stress like this right now out of these three values of shear stress which one do you have to pick for considering the failure which one do you think is logically you should pick for the failure as i have been telling you throughout machine design the basic concept that for designing we always tend to go by the safer design right we tend to make a design which is safer and when you want to make a safe design you consider that whatever stresses are acting or whatever stresses can act are going to be as dangerous as possible right you will make a safe design when you will consider the loading to be dangerous when you will consider the loading to be dangerous and very high in magnitude if you will consider that no loading is going to be very minimum and very safe then obviously the design that you will make will not be able to withstand the higher values of stresses right it's a basic funda of machine design this is not the first time that i am telling you this right now right that is why if you have more than one values of shear stresses as you can see here which one do you think will you pick you will pick that value which is going to predict the highest value of shear stress possible that value which will tell you that the shear stress is going to be this high be ready to make such a design that can withstand this higher value of shear stress right so out of the three values we pick the highest value so again coming to the basic explanation of maximum shear stress theory that when the maximum value of shear stress in such a 3d state of stress reaches that maximum value of shear stress which was present in a uniaxial tension test during failure then the failure is going to happen and since in this case we have multiple values of shear stress possible we are going to pick the highest value of them so when the maximum value when the maximum value out of tau 1 2 tau 2 3 and tau 1 3 reaches the allowed value the allowed value 
of maximum shear stress where in case of uniaxial tension test in case of uniaxial tension test then you can say failure occurs so you can write it like this the maximum value out of sigma 1 2 which is sigma 1 minus sigma 2 divided by 2 mod sigma 2 minus sigma 3 divided by 2 mod and sigma 1 minus sigma 3 divided by 2 mod when the maximum value out of these three reaches the allowed value of shear stress in uniaxial tension test or the value of shear in the value of maximum shear in uniaxial tension test during failure which is equal to sigma yt divided by 2 then the failure is going to occur. We have already discussed that how the value of maximum shear stress during failure in uniaxial tension test is equal to sigma yt divided by 2, right? We have already discussed that. So, this is the expression which you have to use for deciding the failure criteria for maximum shear stress theory. This is the most general expression that you have to use. Now, hold on and listen to me very carefully. From now on, the discussion on maximum shear stress theory is not only going to be interesting but also very important from the point of view of gate examination. I have already talked and discussed about plane stress, plane stress but for those who don't know the concept of plane stress, there is a great confusion in their minds regarding the actual idea of plane stress. As the name suggests, plane stress, it gives them an idea that plane stress is always 2D, is always two-dimensional, right? And for plane stress, since it is two-dimensional, so sigma 3 is not going to exist, right? So they only considered sigma 1 and sigma 2 for case of plane stress. That is an incorrect approach. An incorrect approach of plane stress is to just remove sigma 3 and just consider sigma 1 and sigma 2. That's not what plane stress means. Write down what I'm going to tell you now. It's going to be very crucial for you from the examination point of view. Plane stress is a 3D state of stress. Is a, Irrespective of what you have learned from where. If they have taught you that plane stress is always a 2D state of stress, that is an incorrect statement. Don't go by that speed statement no matter who told you that. Plane stress is a 3D state of stress for which sigma 3 is equal to 0. So get this misconception corrected in your mind that plane stress is a 2D state of stress. No, plane stress is strictly a 3D state of stress with sigma 3 is equal to 0. So just like in this table I gave you the example of a general of a general 3D state of stress. In this case, let's talk about a planar 3D stress or simply a planar stress condition when sigma 3 will always be equal to 0. At this point of time, you may think that, sir, what difference it will make if we just remove sigma 3 or we consider sigma 3 to be 0, both the conditions are same. But no, that's not the case. Let me tell you, let me explain that to you using an example. Now suppose a question came and question gave you that there is a planar state of stress where sigma 1 is equal to 100 megapascal, sigma 2 is equal to 40 megapascal. This is what the question gave or maybe the question just gave you a stress element like this. Okay, let me choose a different color for this. Let's say the question gave you a state of stress on an element like this where sigma 1 is given as 100 megapascal and sigma 2 is given to you as 40 megapascal. And there is no mention of the third dimension. Question directly mentioned that consider the plane stress as shown here. And there is no mention of third dimension or sigma 3. And it asks you what is the maximum value of shear stress that can exist for this given planar stress condition. What you will do? You will think that sigma 1 is given, sigma 2 is given. What should be the maximum value of shear stress? We know that since sigma 1 and only sigma 2 are existing. So maximum value is 100 minus 40 divided by 2 which is going to give you 30, right? You may think like this. No, conceptually that is incorrect. 
as i have already told you that even if it is mentioned that there is a planar state of stress and there is a stress element shown with just two dimensions having two stresses you have to consider sigma 3 as zero what it means is that all of these three conditions you have to consider by putting sigma 3 is equal to 0. So in that case, sigma 1 minus sigma 2 divided by 2, it will remain as it is because sigma 3 is 0, sigma 3 is not present here. So there is no change, which will give you 30 for this case, right? 100 minus 40, which is 60 divided by 2, 30. For this case, it is going to give you sigma 2 divided by 2. That's it because for plane state of stress, for this condition, sigma 3 is equal to 0. This is not going to exist. So, it will give you sigma 2 by 2, which is equal to 40 divided by 2, 20. Right? And in the third expression, you will be having sigma 1 divided by 2, sigma 3 is going to be 0. And sigma 1 divided by 2 will be, sigma 1 divided by 2 is going to be 50. Right? So, out of these three values, which one do you think you should consider? this one this one or this one this one how because on putting sigma 3 is equal to 0 you are getting highest value 50 for this expression you're getting the point you're getting the difference if you totally ignore sigma 3 if you consider that no there is no sigma 3 at all we just have to think of sigma 1 minus sigma 2 divided by 2 because it's a planar stress 3d has no existence in planar stress so i will just consider one type of shear stress then it is going to be totally incorrect if you want to find out the maximum value the maximum value of shear stress you have to consider sigma 3 as 0 you have to put sigma 3 is equal to 0 in all these expression and whatever final answer comes that you have to select if you totally ignore sigma 3 you just consider sigma 1 and sigma 2 you will get this as the answer you will consider 30 to be the maximum shear stress and you will equate 30 with sigma y by sigma y t by 2 but if you consider all of them you will get 50 here and then you equate 50 with sigma y t by 2 and obviously your answer will be changed now if you recall i have taught this to you in detail in thin pressure vessels in thin pressure vessels where in strength of materials in strength of materials right where we have talked about in plane shear stress out of plane shear stress all these concepts are not required to be discussed here but if you don't know about these concepts i want you to have a clear conceptual clarity of these concepts, Gate has repeatedly asked these questions. It may not ask you directly as a question from theory of failure, but it has asked you the question of maximum shear stress in thin pressure vessels a lot of times. Obviously, this is not the place to discuss all these details because these are separately covered in thin pressure vessels. So let's continue the discussion on maximum shear stress theory, the discussion that we were having. So in this theory of failure, you have to just pick the maximum value out of these three and equate that with sigma yt divided by 2, which is the maximum shear stress in uniaxial tension test during failure. Now, you can see that 2 is present in the denominator everywhere, here, 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 everywhere, right? So what we can do is that we can write this expression like this. We can simply remove the value of 2 from the denominator in all the cases and we can simply write it like this. The maximum value out of these 3 should be equal to sigma yt and if you want to consider factor of safety then just divide factor of safety here. This is somewhat more improved version of maximum shear stress theory equation. Now you will see that at some places they define the equation, the maximum shear stress theory differently for 3D and 2D state of stress. I have already cleared that confusion and to simplify this equation further, what we can do is that we can individually write them across sigma yt divided by FOS. Let me write it and then I will explain you why I am doing that. So what we have done here is that this expression we have broken down into three different equations, right? 
Now, since you have to select the maximum values, any maximum value out of these three, so any of these values are going to satisfy sigma yt divided by FOS and that you have to use. So out of these three equations, first, second and third, any one you have to pick for a given case of maximum shear stress theory, right? And which one do you have to pick? The maximum out of them where this difference on the left hand side is coming out to be maximum. That one will become the equation of maximum shear stress theory for the case that will be given to you. Now, let's see something interesting here. For the case of planar stress, when sigma 3 is equal to 0, what this equation will become? This will stay sigma 1 minus sigma 2 is equal to sigma yt divided by FOS. No change here. This one is going to become sigma 2 is equal to sigma yt divided by FOS and this one will become sigma 1 is equal to sigma yt divided by FOS when sigma 3 is equal to 0 for which case? For case of planar stress what I have already taught you. Now from the knowledge of strength of materials, we already know that sigma 1 is always greater than sigma 2 or at worst it can be equal to sigma 2. So it is never possible that when you are searching maximum value out of these three values, then sigma 2 will become maximum and sigma 1 will not be maximum. It is never possible because sigma 1 is always greater than sigma 2 and at worst it is equal to sigma 2. So it is not possible to have this value, this value as maximum and not this value as maximum. So you can totally reject this case altogether when you are searching maximum values out of these three for a planar stress, right? So it will just leave you with two conditions. Sigma 1 is equal to sigma yt by FOS and sigma 1 minus sigma 2 is equal to sigma yt by FOS. Now let me give you a very interesting conclusion. The case of planar stress that we were discussing that I showed in the table, the case of planar stress, recall what these values were. The values were sigma 1 as 100, sigma 2 as 40 I think and for planar stress sigma 3 was 0. Now what will be the maximum value of shear stress for this condition? You can check from here, sigma 1 minus sigma 2 for this case will come out to be 100 minus 40 divided by 2 which is 30. So this will come out to be 30. I am not considering any factor of safety right now. Okay. And sigma 2 obviously we are not considering here. But if we would have considered it, it was equal to 40 directly sigma 2. Right. I have crossed it here. So I am sure you are able to recall that it is sigma 2 here. Right. And sigma 1 is directly coming out to be 100. Out of these three values, which one is coming out to be highest for the case of planar stress? sigma 1 and if you use a very basic common sense of mathematics that when both sigma 1 and sigma 2 both values are positive listen to me very carefully when both sigma 1 and sigma 2 are positive sigma 1 and sigma 2 are positive then their difference obviously i have taken mod will always be less than sigma 1 because if you just consider sigma 1 Sigma 1 is present on both the sides, right? But on the left hand side, you are further reducing, subtracting a positive number from a positive number. So LHS will decrease as compared to RHS, which only has Sigma 1, right? So when both Sigma 1 and Sigma 2 are positive, obviously Sigma 1 minus Sigma 2 will be less than Sigma 1, right? And even if when both of them are negative, then again LHS will be less than RHS because you have a mod here. Suppose both of them are negative, it is minus 100 and minus 40. So in that case, you will be having minus 100 minus of minus 40, which is going to be plus 40, which is going to give you upon putting a mod 60, right? Will be less than mod of minus 100, will be less than 100. True or not, you have a mod here. You are only bothered about the magnitude of maximum shear stress. I have already told you that by drawing the Mohr circle, right? That is why when, what we can say, when both sigma 1 and sigma 2 are both are either positive or both are negative. In both of these cases, sigma 1 minus sigma 2 will always be less than sigma 1 mod, right? 
such a case is called as the case of like stresses like stresses when both these stresses sigma 1 and sigma 2 are like stresses means both of them are positive or both of them are negative so when both sigma 1 and sigma 2 are like stresses in that case always sigma 1 mod will be more than sigma 1 minus sigma 2 mod what does it tell you it effectively tells you that when sigma 1 and sigma 2 are like stress this expression will always be less than this expression so whenever you have to select the maximum out of these three values the first one this one is never going to get selected when both sigma 1 and sigma 2 both sigma 1 and sigma 2 are like stresses right so what is the conclusion that we have got we already removed the second case of sigma 2 as a possibility because sigma 1 is always greater than sigma 2 and when both sigma 1 and sigma 2 are like stresses then this is also going to be less than sigma 1. So for the case of like stress you can write it down in your notes if you want for the case of like stress sigma 1 is always going to be deciding factor for maximum shear stress theory because maximum shear stress will be given by sigma 1 by 2. 2 and 2 will get cancelled as I have, we have already done and you will get this as the final expression to be used for maximum shear stress theory. Again I am telling you, you don't have to remember this. It is not something that you have to remember that when sigma 1 and sigma 2 are like I have to use this. Don't remember anything. I have already told you that you have to pick the maximum value out of these three. Now depending upon the condition, just put the values and find the and use the maximum out of all these three. For the case of planar stress, sigma 3 will become 0. Sigma 2, obviously, even if you directly use the value, it can never be the highest value out of these three. So you don't have to remove it like the way I have removed it here. You simply consider it. You consider that value. What the answer will be coming? You see that which of them is highest. This is never going to be highest. For the case of like stress, this will also not be the highest. Automatically, sigma 1 is going to get selected this expression is going to come you don't have to learn it but yes if you want to quickly refer to any of the expression then learning this can help you but what about the case when sigma 1 and sigma 2 are not like stresses when they are opposite in sign suppose sigma 1 is 100 and sigma 2 is minus 40 what about that case in that case always sigma 1 minus sigma 2 mod will be greater than sigma 1 mod opposite of the like stresses how check it 100 minus of minus 40 it is going to become plus 140 which will be greater than 100 right or not always it is going to happen because if sigma 2 is negative negative and this minus are going to get added up together so initially rhs was just sigma 1 but LHS now will be sigma 1 plus some other value. Why plus? Because minus of this and a minus of sigma 2 are going to get added and increase the value of left hand side. You getting the point? Now you may think sir what about the case when sigma 2 is positive but sigma 1 is negative. Then also it is going to be true. How? Check it. Minus 100 minus 40. Sorry plus 40. So sigma 2 is plus 40 but minus sign will stay here. So it is going to be minus 140 and don't forget that you have a mod here. You are just bothered about the magnitude. So you can clearly see that it is still coming out to be plus 140 after the mod which is greater than minus 100 mod or 100. Right. So what conclusion you can draw? You can draw the conclusion that for unlike stresses, for unlike stress when sigma 1 and sigma 2 have opposite nature. When one of them is tensile but, but other is compressive. In that case this expression is going to be the expression, the equation of maximum shear stress theory because this value is going to be the highest as compared to sigma 1 and obviously as compared to sigma 2. Right? Again I am telling you, you don't have to remember this. If suppose question has given you unlike value of shear, unlike value of normal stresses, you will automatically get that here, right? If you put the opposite values of 100 and minus 40, you will automatically see that this will come out to be 140 because 100 and minus 40 will get added up because there is a minus sign here. Since sigma 3 is 0 here, sigma 2 mod will come out to be 40 
and sigma 1 mod will come out to be 100 you will clearly see that this is giving you the highest value of all sigma 1 minus sigma 2 mod is giving the highest value of all for unlike stress so you don't have to remember this but these are obviously some interesting conclusion from maximum shear stress theory now let's see the region of safety for maximum shear stress theory clearly we have three equations here so on the basis of them we are going to have a combined region of safety representing all three of them because which of them is going to get selected will depend upon the values of sigma 1 and sigma 2 in first quadrant both sigma 1 and sigma 2 are positive both are like stresses right in quadrant 3 also both sigma 1 and sigma 2 are negative both are like stresses but in quadrant number 2 and quadrant number 4 here and here one of them sigma 1 here is positive sigma 2 is negative in this quadrant and in this quadrant sigma 1 is positive sigma 2 is negative so depending upon different quadrants you are having different combinations of sigma 1 and sigma 2 whether they are going to be like stresses or unlike stresses right and depending upon that we are going to select the equation to be plotted in order to get the region of safety right and if you do that you will get this as the region of safety you can see the shape you can understand the shape here it is horizontal it's vertical it is again vertical horizontal and these are the two lines inclined at 45 degrees 45 degrees to the horizontal as i have already told you that sigma yc and sigma yt are taken as same unless something else is stated so sigma yc here is also going to be nothing but sigma yt and here also sigma yc is going to be sigma yt only now if i show you that how these lines are representing these equations then let's first remove this factor of safety right this is important from design criteria i know that but to plot the equation we are not considering it so we have just simple three equations this line here is the equation of sigma 1 is equal to s y t right sigma y t similarly this line here is the expression of sigma 1 is equal to minus sigma y t and if you open the mod you will get both plus and minus so on the basis of that you can plot it here similarly this is sigma 2 is equal to sigma y t this is sigma 2 is equal to minus sigma y t and this line and this line here are the two equations that you will get by removing the mod in this expression this is the equation of sigma 1 minus sigma 2 is equal to minus sigma y t and this is the equation of sigma 1 minus sigma 2 is equal to sigma y t and this is how we are getting the region of safety for maximum shear stress theory now there is a concept an important concept of shear diagonal shear diagonal look in this graph what will be the line or what will be the any geometry of pure shear you know what is pure shear we have discussed that in detail in strength of materials pure shear is that case when only shear stress is acting on the stress element when only shear stress is acting such a case okay so if you draw more circle for that what you will get when this value sigma 1 is equal to sigma 2 but in minus sign so sigma 2 is minus of sigma 1 right i am not going in detail of pure shear we have discussed that in strength of materials but if you try to plot this here what you will get you will get a line a line when sigma 1 plus sigma 2 is equal to 0 or sigma 2 is equal to minus of sigma 1 so that line will pass like this this is the line of pure shear this is the line of pure shear means any of the coordinates lying on this line represent the case of pure shear as i told you there are different combination of sigma 1 and sigma 2 possible infinite combinations possible right and we don't plot all of them practically but we use factor of safety to find out the region of safety and if that coordinate is lying in the region of safety it is safe if it is lying outside of that then it is not safe so the coordinate lying on this line are the coordinates of pure shear because for those coordinates sigma 2 is equal to sigma 1 with a negative sign 
सेम हेयर करेक्ट सो दिस दिस इज द लाइन ऑफ प्योर शेयर विच इज कॉल्ड ए शेयर डायगनल इट इज ऑब्वियसली एट एन एंगल ऑफ फोर्टी फाइव डिग्री फ्रॉम बोथ एक्स एक्सिस एंड वाई एक्सिस एंड दिस लाइन इफ यू सी इट क्रॉसेज द सेफ्टी रीजन द शेडेड रीजन एट वॉट कॉर्डिनेट एट सिग्मा वाई टी डिवाइडेड बाई टू राइट हाउ डू यू नो दैट बिकॉज दीज लाइन आर एट फोर्टी फाइव डिग्री फोर्टी फाइव डिग्री फोर्टी फाइव डिग्री राइट एंड एनी लाइन विच अगेन पासिस थ्रू फोर्टी फाइव डिग्री दिस विल फॉर्म आई सोशल ट्राइंगल सो दिस पीक विल बी एट देंटर ऑफ इट Hence, if this is sigma y t, this half will be sigma y t by two. So, along this line of pure shear or pure diagonal, it will cross the region of safety at sigma y by two. Here also, you see, it will cross it at sigma y by two, right? And this tells again tells you the same funda which we have written here. Tom x is equal to point five times of sigma y t. That the safer value of shear is. half of the maximum allowed value of the tensile stress right sigma yt by 2 if you do you will get that value of shear stress because this is the line of pure shear for which it is going to be safe after that it will not be safe now let's start comparing different theories of failure so you need to first look at this diagram here i know it looks very complex but we have simply superimposed all the graphical uh, representations of each of theories of failure in one diagram so this is sigma 1 this is sigma 2 and if you recall all of them were in intersecting sigma 1 at sigma yt and sigma 2 at sigma yt on positive side and on the negative side since sigma yt and sigma yc we magnitude wise both of them were same so here it was minus sigma yt here here also it was minus sigma yt correct now let me show you each theory one by one in this diagram you can see a square this square right this is rankine theory the very first one maximum principal stress theory so rankine theory the next one was a hexagon so this line and then this line if you can see right this dotted line actually then again this line then this line and again this dotted line if you can see right this shape right this was coming in the second theory maximum shear stress theory or tresca theory it has one more name which i missed there which is guest guest and tresca guest and tresca theory you can write it there if you missed it okay now next diagram if you can see this one a rhombus dotted shown by a dotted line right this one and then this one this one this was coming in maximum principal strain theory or saint venant theory so this is saint venant theory three theories covered next one was total strain energy theory which was an ellipse and distortion energy theory which was again an ellipse so you can see two ellipses here one is dotted and one is drawn from a solid line so you can see this dotted one right this dotted ellipse just follow the the tip of this uh, pen this one right this is hague's theory which was hague's theory total strain energy theory this dotted ellipse this is having dotted ellipse and next one was distortion energy theory or von mises theory which is shown by a solid ellipse just look at the nib of the pen this one and then this right so if i just show you these three ellipses on the diagram separately the one which is extending more in the first quadrant the on the outer side the solid one is of distortion energy theory and the dotted one which is extending less is of hague's theory or total strain energy theory all right now now let's compare their yield strength in shear with their yield strength in tension till now i uh, i have told this to you only for one case only for the maximum shear stress theory that yield strength in shear is equal to 0.5 times of yield strength in tension and how we concluded that by drawing a shear diagonal the line of pure shear right so if i just recall you once more 
that the line of pure shear was represented was uh, actually coming from the concept of pure shear if you have an element under pure shear like this then if you draw its mohar circle then this is how it will look so in this case the value of tau which is the radius is same as sigma 1 is same as sigma 2 but in negative sign so for the case of pure shear or for the case of shear diagonal which we are going to draw tau is equal to sigma 1 is equal to minus of sigma 2 this is the important uh, expression that you need to write down in your notes separately okay now in this case i have already told you that how do we get the shear diagonal and from this expression also that i wrote that tau is equal to sigma 1 is equal to minus sigma 2 so you can see that sigma 1 is equal to minus sigma 2 so if you draw the line of sigma 1 is equal to minus sigma 2 here you will get a line like this right this line is the shear diagonal and the coordinates where it crosses the region of safety all these region which covers the origin are the region of safety so the region falling inside of all these curves is safe according to that theory and region falling outside is unsafe according to that theory so this line when it crosses the region of safety from that point we decide that how much is going to be the yield strength how much how you are going to compare the yield strength in shear with the yield strength in tension because after that we consider that it has failed it has yielded right so yielding will be done at the boundary of them so basically you need to find out the coordinates of those points where they are intersecting that will tell you that how the line of pure shear or how the value of shear is related with the value of sigma 1 and sigma 2 all right now before we move on to that just have a look at this all these values that i have already written here i will tell you how these values came so for rankine theory for maximum principal stress theory the yield strength in shear is same as yield strength in tension their ratio is one how if you look at this line where this line is intersecting the Rankine diagram the square here at this point and at this point right so you can see that the value of tau is equal to sigma yt when it is intersecting when it is crossing right so obviously their ratio is equal to 1 coming to the next theory I have already told you this I have already explained this to you earlier and how we got this if we look at the line this was the variation of maximum shear stress theory this is the line of pure shear where it is crossing here and here it is crossing the region of safety it is going out of it right so this is this line is line of pure shear right and this line has coordinate has the equation sigma 1 is equal to minus sigma 2 i have already told this here so you can clearly see that this is intersecting since this is 45 this is 45 so it will be intersecting this line at the mid of these coordinates at the mid of sigma yt so automatically the value of tau the value of tau y will be equal to half of sigma yt or tau y divided by sigma yt is equal to 0.5 same thing you have to apply for all these equations for other equations also we have concluded just like this and these are the ratios that you must remember all of them now you may think that some of these ratios are not that relevant no question has been asked in gate from them so don't worry if you think like that that you don't need to remember uh, these expressions where mu is involved because these have not been asked in gate so there's no need to learn them then how you can get those expressions again by using this same equation i have told you what you need to do you need to find out the point where they are intersecting basically you have two equations right one equation is of the shape the region and that equation is the equation of theory of failure itself every theory of failure has an equation and that we have plotted on this graph so that equation and this equation these two equations where they are intersecting that you need to find out and that point will tell you that this is the limit of safety after that it will yield so at that point you can relate the yield strength in shear with the yield strength in tension so simply you need to solve two equations one by each of each theory of failure and other 
of shear diagonal. This is the equation for shear diagonal. Tau 1, uh, sigma 1 is equal to minus sigma 2. Let me give you an example. For this case of sand valent theory, what is the equation for uh, sigma 1, sigma 2 means for 2D state of stress, sigma 1 minus mu sigma 2 is equal to sigma yt, right? This was the equation. Now you put this. This is the value that we know. That tau is equal to sigma 1 and tau is equal to minus sigma 2. You put it here. So sigma 1 is equal to tau and sigma 2 is equal to minus tau is equal to sigma yt. What you will get? Minus minus will become plus. So it will be plus mu tau. You take tau as common. So tau will be common 1 plus mu and then you send 1 plus mu in the denominator. So what you will get? Tau y divided by sigma yt is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus mu. The same expression that I have written here. Same you do for the high for the Higgs theory, total strain energy theory. You write down the expression for two dimensional state of stress and then you put tau is equal to sigma 1 and tau is equal to minus sigma 2. Solve it. You will get this ratio is equal to 1 by 2 root 1 plus mu. You got that. Now, I told you that for the case that we are studying for max for the general engineering material, the value of mu we take for this experiment as 0.3. So, if you put 0.3 here, you will get a value. It will be 0.77, I think. So, that value can be used, but you don't need to learn that value as I told you. The value of mu will generally be given to you in the question. So, you don't have to bother about that. Okay. So, in a similar way, we will proceed and we will reach at the final theory of failure, which is von Mises theory or distortion energy theory. So, for that, you will get the ratio as 1 by root 3. This is important. This you need to remember. So, out of all the five ratios, all of them you can find out by just, you know, solving the equation of theory of failure with the equation of shear diagonal. But this one and this one are important, are directly asked and directly used in numericals. This one, maximum shear stress theory. And this one, distortion energy theory. In this case, tau y is half of sigma yt. And in this case, tau y is to be divided by root 3 uh, to get the value. Alright, so this is how the different shear strength compare with the tensile strength for each of these theories. Now coming to the next comparison, that for what material you can use them. Okay, now how do we decide that for what material we can use them? It is done experimentally. Experimentally, you have to see that this theory is predicting failure better for which material. As I initially told you that in case of uniaxial tension, all of them were reaching all these parameters of strain and shear stress and normal stress. All of them were reaching at the limiting point simultaneously. So these theories were of no use at all because all of them, you know, were reaching at the maximum limit at the same point. But in complex cases, in the case of complex stresses, they don't all of them reach at the limiting value at the same point. Some reach their limiting point early as compared to the other. So that one will be the prominent criteria. And it depends upon the material. It depends upon the loading that which one of them is predicting the failure better which one of them is reaching the limiting value first right so it is experimentally seen so experimentally the first theory Rankine theory maximum principle stress theory is best suited for brittle materials and Tresca theory and von Mises theory maximum shear stress theory and distortion energy theory are suited for ductile material they predict the failure of ductile material in one of the most accurate ways as compared to other theories okay these two theories as such are not that important and relevant for our discussion for the exams that we have to write mostly because the uh, prediction that they do is not that much accurate as compared to the other three theories for any of the specific material all right coming to the next comparison based upon the type of loading okay different types of loading can be there uniaxial load biaxial load different types of loadings are possible so which theory is suited for what type of loading let's discuss that look the first theory rankine theory is suited for three types of loading you can write that down in your notes first one is uniaxial uniaxial tensile load 
or compressive load so uniaxial loading let me just write it like that then biaxial load of same type of same type means either both tensile or both compressive and the third one is hydrostatic loading we already know what hydrostatic loading is when the stress applied normal stress applied in x direction is same as y direction as same as z direction so sigma x is equal to sigma y is equal to sigma z and tau is equal to zero so this loading is hydrostatic so for that case Rankine theory is good for hydrostatic loading the best result is given by Saint Venant theory this theory maximum principal strain theory so you can write this in Saint Venant theory and it is best suited for hydrostatic loading okay so in this graph I have shown only two region of safety for only two theories first one is distortion energy theory or von Mises theory for which we have an ellipse and the other one is maximum shear stress theory for which we have an hexagon or Tresca theory for which we have hexagon like this all right now compare their region of safety first only these two which of the two region of safety is larger in area or which of the region of safety is large as compared to the other you can clearly see that the ellipse is totally covering the hexagon as well as there is some additional area in the ellipse this region here this complete shaded region which I am drawing right now is that region which is extra in the ellipse as compared to the hexagon so what we can say that the region of safety let me shortly write it as ROS but ROS is no abbreviation for region of safety I am just writing it because I have limited space so region of safety for distortion energy theory is more than region of safety for maximum shear stress theory in your notes you write it in full form region of safety all right by the shaded area now what does it mean let's understand that with a coordinate suppose there is a coordinate I am sure you can see this coordinate this is the coordinate in the shaded region okay the shaded region which is excess in the distortion energy um, theory this coordinate lies in that region so what does it mean it means that whatever are the stresses at that point at this coordinate those are the stresses present in the body which we are planning to design okay if this coordinate was lying inside the hexagon then what does it mean it means that this is lying in the region of safety of the hexagon of the Tresca theory and as per the Tresca theory if the coordinate of that stresses are lying inside the region of safety means it's a safe design the stresses are within the region of safety so it is a safe design design we can go ahead with the designing but since this coordinate or this point it represents sigma 1 and sigma 2 it is lying in such a region which is outside of the Tresca area of the Tresca region and but it is inside of the von Mises region so what does it mean it means that this stress and this design as per the Tresca theory is not safe because it is lying outside the region of safety of the Tresca theory but as per the von Mises theory distortion energy theory it is safe so what these theories will say the Tresca theory will say that don't design like this the material the uh, stresses are entering into the unsafe region the design will fail you, I don't think you should design it by that theory right this is what this theory tells us but the other theory the von Mises theory will say that don't worry go ahead design it it is still in the safe region so there is a contradiction one theory saying that don't design it is unsafe other theory saying that go ahead with the design it is totally safe right so this kind of behavior there is a term for that and you will be having some questions on that that term is called as conservative I am sure you have heard of this term before in general day to day language someone who is you know who is very scared to cross his boundaries to cross his limits in the social circle in his study circle anywhere in his uh, entire life and he just tries to keep it safe and within the limits such a person are called as conservative a rough definition I am giving you right 
Similarly, in theories of failure, those theories which uh, you know which uh, are trying to keep it safe. How do they keep it safe? By having a lower region of safety. If the region of safety will be lower, any slightly higher value of stress also they will say that no, this is unsafe. We don't want to design it uh, by this method and don't design the material like this. Use a better material, use a larger dimension. The design is unsafe. So such approach is called, called as conservative approach. When as the stress slightly increases and crosses your boundary, then you call it totally unsafe, right? So those areas, those region of safety, which are lower in the area, they are called as conservative theories. Means they only have a small region of safety. So obviously any slightly higher value of stress also, they will say that no, 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 it's unsafe. Don't design it, it's unsafe. So such approach is conservative approach. And those theories of failure are called as conservative theories of failure. So if we are comparing the theories for ductile materials, because both of these theories we are comparing, because both of them are applicable, as, you know, with good accuracy in a way for ductile material, right? So which of these are theories are conservative? Obviously that theory which is having less region of safety will be more conservative. So you can write it down uh, in your notes that the theory which is having less region of safety is more conservative because it is trying to keep the design safer. Correct. So obviously in this case, Tresca theory or maximum shear stress theory is a conservative theory as compared to distortion energy theory or von Mises theory. This is very important thing. It can be asked to you in the examination. Now coming to the next point in the same discussion, the dimension. You are designing something, you have found out that as per your design, this is the value of stress which is coming. This is sigma 1 principal stress coming, this is sigma 2 principal minor principal stress coming at the critical section. And that you plotted here, right? that's what it is, sigma 1 and sigma 2 at the point of consideration at any critical section. right? And that is going to tell you whether it is safe or unsafe. right? So basically you will find out the value of sigma 1 and sigma 2 and accordingly you will make the design so that the value of sigma 1 and sigma 2 lies in the safe region as per whatever theory you want to use. So these theories are used to design the components. If you find out the value of stress, accordingly you can do the designing, right? So out of these two theories, which theory is going to give you a larger dimension? When you are designing, it will tell you that keep this much dimension, right? This much area, this much cross-sectional area. So which of these theories will give you a larger dimension for the same design? Can you make any guess? You can totally understand that. No need to make the guess. You can totally understand that by the concept. If region of safety is less, again coming to the discussion of region of safety. If region of safety is less for the Tresca theory. So what it will happen for this point, which is lying outside of this theory, but inside of the uh, von Mises theory, it will say that no, 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 design is un unsafe. If you want to keep the design safe, you need to reduce the value of stress such that this coordinate enters into the region of safety. And how do you decrease the value of stress? By increasing the dimension, right? By increasing the area over which it is acting. So obviously, okay. And on the other hand, von Mises theory will say, no, no, don't worry, it is safe. No need to increase the design. The design is safe. So what will happen? Automatically, the dimension proposed by the Tresca theory will increase because it is considering it to be unsafe. So it will increase the dimension. Hence, whenever region of safety is lower, that theory will try to give a higher dimension for that design. This was point number one according to, con according to conservativeness of the theory. Point number two you write in terms of dimensions. If you compare their dimensions, then maximum shear stress theory will predict a larger dimension as compared to distortion energy theory because it has a lesser region of safety. It will try to reduce the value of stress if it wants the stress to be in the safe region. This is also important. This can also be asked. And this is not only true only for these two theories. Any two other theories, if you want to compare, you can compare them on these grounds on the basis of the region of safety. Okay. Now coming to the main point here that how do you decide which theory to apply? A question has been given to you. How do you decide that? That which theory you need to apply? Look, both of them are safe. No doubt in that. Good theories for ductile material. But if question says, 
that use a use the most safe theory or use a safer theory to design then obviously the safer theory or the most safe theory you can say for ductile material is maximum shear stress theory because it has lesser region of safety so in that case you need to use MSST maximum shear stress theory if the question says that do the designing do a economical designing a designing which has lesser expenses so which theory will you go by you need to understand that where expenses happen expenses happen in the material cost if some theory is uh, predicting that use a larger dimension so more material will be required it will be an expensive theory especially if you are doing it on a mass production level then that component will be drawn larger so it will be increase in the expense increase in the cost so it will be a costlier theory if you compare both of them which is costlier MSST the Tresca theory is costlier because it is saying make the dimension larger so it will increase your expenses so it's an expensive theory okay so if question gives you a hint that design needs to be economical then go with the distortion energy theory all right obviously size we have understood the size will predict it will be larger for MSST and smaller for DET but if question does not gives you anything then which one which of them will you apply look for that you need to look at the failure points what I mean to say is that whenever these theories were designed as I told you it was practically conducted practically concluded that which theory is suitable for what material right so you need, need to look at the failure points of the ductile material when you want to compare them so practically when this experiment is conducted for a variety of ductile materials you will see that fracture points failure points not fracture point failure points lie something like this you will see that failure points are more close to the distortion energy theory as compared to maximum shear stress theory although there will be points lying closer to maximum shear stress theory in the region between maximum shear stress theory and distortion energy theory and outside the distortion energy theory as well but you will see if you want to draw best fitting curve then that will be closer to the distortion energy theory as compared to maximum shear stress theory what does this tell you which one of the theories is more accurate distortion energy theory which is having the shape of the ellipse that is more accurate as compared to the shape of the hexagon which is maximum shear stress theory or Tresca theory but does it mean that if question does not mention you anything you will apply the distortion energy theory no it is actually the opposite of that if question does not mention anything you will use the maximum shear stress theory Tresca theory which is less accurate as compared to distortion energy theory why we do that we do that because both of them are not very much different are not very far from each other if you look at the shape of them you will see that they are not very far from each other they are quite close to each other and failure points are lying in the space between them as well as you know near to the line of MSST as well but that's not enough it should offer you some more advantage and that extra advantage is the favorite advantage of engineers and that advantage is ease of calculation this we have been doing in almost every subject and I keep telling you that that we can sacrifice one two three four five percent of accuracy also in some cases to have a simpler calculation because we are engineers we are solving we are not researching we are not scientists that we want uh, to research even when there is 1% deviation we want to find practical solution to the problem which we can implement right so we can suffer little bit on accuracy we will increase the factor of safety we will use a better material right we will compensate that with some other practical solution but we will try to keep the uh, solution and our analysis comparatively simpler because we our focus is not on researching our focus in is on finding out the solution in every subject we have been doing that right so here also since both of the theories are not drastically different they are very much close to each other one is little more accurate than the other but other one which is less accurate is more easier to apply how do you know that look at the shape just straight line shape look at the equation the equation is also very simply simpler of distortion of sorry maximum shear stress theory as compared to distortion energy theory that is why if nothing else is mentioned in the else in the equation then maximum shear stress theory is more preferred as compared to distortion energy theory however distortion energy theory is more accurate 
So this is the most detailed uh, explanation of the unit of theories of failure. In no other source, you will, uh, no other single source, you will find so many concepts and details. So I'm sure you have understood the concept, the basic concepts, as well as the numerical concepts and graphical concepts of theory of failure. Try to solve as much questions as possible. I have already told you that it's not necessary that a direct question you will be having from theories of failure. But you can have indirect questions as well as the use of these concepts in some other type of question as well. Okay, some other question from strength of material may be coming where you need to design, maybe you need to design for torsion, for shear stress maybe. And there these concepts can be applied of region of safety, of the relationship between the shear strength and the tensile strength and so on. So make sure that you solve enough number of questions. You will see the application of theories of failure in multiple subjects in multiple units. All right. All the best.